I haven't recorded anything in respect to Ukraine for some time. This is something that, again, I have to video record. I was in this case, was people in it. People are dying left and right in Ukraine, even in Russia. Uh, it's dedicated. It's it's actually really bad news. It's it's getting into a few issues I will not even discuss. Um, Precaution. Just as I publish about the precautions revolt, I couldn't do any better than this. I warned precaution. I warned uh, the people that precautions revolt is a prelude. It's an entry into a nuclear strike on the people of Ukraine, and the way Vladimir Putin have design this to happen was through deliberate revolt he would engineer against the Moscow through Prigozhin uh, use Prigozhin to march toward uh, Moscow uh, maybe Prigozhin was actually it's it's possible that that he compelled Prigozhin into revolt this is what it appears Prigozhin uh, revolted against that's a very very high possibility if the two did not orchestrate this thing together i don't know this was mk ultra news uh Prigozhin should march toward moscow i uh, would never reach moscow there was some regiments that would join Prigozhin along the way to moscow but putin vladimir putin would use literally nuclear weapon to erase them from the face of it in a very, very fast and efficient form. Uh, Putin claimed that something like this was actually necessary. Um, I'm sure that you remember prior to the war on people of Ukraine in 2022, there was a big social crisis uh, uphill in Belarus. And it was uh, Lukashenko who in exactly, well, in a similar way, have confronted his opposition. Uh, so, and for the sake of the Russian people, there is an innocent souls in there. I very much see myself in it. Uh, and of course, for the people of Ukraine's sake, the strike, the nuclear strike, which Vladimir Putin have designed to take place against Prigozhin, would soon uh, take place also against Ukraine on Ukrainian side. At this point in time, Vladimir Putin have lost control over the situation in Ukraine and appears is rather losing war in Ukraine. He is losing grounds. Ukrainian troops are advancing. They're sharp. Uh, Vladimir Putin have wasted enormous amount of weaponry in Ukraine, uh, but it's a nuclear arsenal he did not put into work. And he designed uh, Prigozhin's revolt, where he orchestrate one with uh, Prigozhin. You know, this is also how, by the way, they pay people like Wagner's. They hire people for the stuff. And uh, most of the people like this never return even alive, man. They don't get even the pay, not even first pay. They get, they get, they get their heart and they're basically covered with the ground. And I feel sorry for the people like this, because it has a lot to do with the psychiatry. It's got a lot to do with the exploitation of the social circumstances of the people like this. It's got a lot to do with uh, maybe even everything with the state that is through the social uh, struggle, through the social oppression, pushing people like myself, let's say, right on the front line for the sake of their dear country. And in this case, the super billionaire Vladimir Putin. He does have the money for his palaces and stuff, prestige, but when it comes to his soldiers, he's paying them with a piece of, I don't even know if it's a piece of, uh, like a piece of, little piece of land, grave. Uh, it's all kinds of stuff that went on. It's disgusting. Every life is valuable. 
And the people who do not see themselves in this, people who see themselves rather in a prosperity, regardless, even if Russian soldiers don't want to get into this, their lives are just as worthy as anybody else's lives. You know? Um, for this matter, it's exactly what I did. I placed already in a title, and below I have placed also a video from the C uh, what is it from the CNN? I don't know, but it's exactly the one that it was integrated in this MK Ultra brainwash. Yeah, but we just put it in exclaim in this video: if there is a threat to our territorial integrity, independence, and sovereignty, to the existence of the Russian state, there will be use of a nuclear weapons. Yeah, because if you start with this kind of stuff on a Russian side, it easily will um, expand across the border. And that's exactly what Vladimir Putin is, was uh, desperate to get going. Vladimir Putin orchestrated, made no mistake, attacks on Moscow apartments, uh, drones, uh, drone attacks, uh, he orchestrated, uh, he staged his own terror attacks on his own politicians in Moscow. Uh, he did that kind of stuff. Uh, and he used, including, you know, to compensate also for the losses of his military uh, staff, equipment in Ukraine, in war against people in Ukraine. He used issues like this uh, to take, like in the name of uh, retaliation, uh, in account crimes against humanity by basically killing Ukrainian people, bombing uh, buildings of the civilians, uh, important infrastructures, a dam was exploded over there, as you have seen, uh, floods, catastrophe basically, and continues with this ag aggressive way to expand his politic into the use, into the use of the nuclear bombs. Russian President Vladimir Putin said on Friday that his deployment of tactical nuclear weapons to close ally Belarus was a warning to the West about arming and supporting Ukraine. Speaking at Russia's flagship economic forum in St. Petersburg, Putin confirmed for the first time that nuclear warheads had already been delivered. He added that this was only the first batch and all deliveries will be completed by the end of the summer or by the end of the year. He stressed, however, that he saw no need for Russia to resort to nuclear weapons for now. This is also Moscow's first deployment of such warheads outside of Russia since the fall of the Soviet Union. <laughs> Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko, a staunch ally of Putin, said late on Tuesday his country had started taking delivery of Russian tactical nuclear weapons that included some three times more powerful than the atomic bombs the U.S. dropped on Japan in 1945. <laughs> the United States has criticized Putin's decision, but has said it has no intention of altering its own stance on strategic nuclear weapons. U.S. Secretary of State's Antony Blinken said it has not seen any signs that Russia is preparing to use a nuclear weapon. Antony Blinken said it has not seen any signs that Russia is preparing to... Uh, I did this deliberately for the Russian side to see that. Uh, just pay attention that um, there is laughter in the room. It's very relaxed. And um, the flag that you see right there could, within 15 minutes... In as much as in 15 minutes, if it comes to the nuclear attack, I hope the Russian side is listening to this. Within the 15 minutes, it could be that you're going to have on the Moscow building in Kremlin, the flag that you see right there in the background, if it's going to come to the nuclear confrontation. This is something that the Russian side should take deadly serious. I don't think you're going to make it. I don't think you're going to make it anywhere. With it, if you are going to exercise such option, there will be the most severe retaliation you have ever faced, and it's not going to be the damage you're going to pay, damage you owe for the damage infrastructures across Ukraine you have caused. 
is going to be eternal slavery. You are not going to have any kind of sovereignty for as long as you're going to breathe in this world. If it comes to that. It's people that are barely more than what you are waiting to go with it. Because they have so much far superior technology than you have. You have nothing really. To use a nuclear weapon. We'll continue to monitor the situation very closely and, and very carefully. We have no reason to adjust our own nuclear posture. Uh, we don't see any indications that Russia is preparing to use a nuclear weapon. At the, uh, is Putin said the West was doing everything it could to inflict a strategic defeat on Russia in Ukraine. Here comes the important part that Putin uh, said as a precondition about the one week earlier. He added that talks with the West to reduce Russia's vast nuclear arsenal were a non-starter. But has said it has that included some three times under Lukashenko this end of the year had already been delivered. He added that this was only the first batch and all deliveries will be completed by the end of the summer or by the end of the year. He stressed, however, that he saw no need for Russia to resort to nuclear weapons for now. This is also Moscow's first deployment of such warheads outside of Russia since the fall of the Soviet Union. Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko The first nuclear warheads have been delivered to the territory of Belarus, but just the first ones. This is the first batch. The use of nuclear weapons undoubtedly is theoretically possible for Russia. For Russia, it is possible if there is a threat to our territorial integrity, independence and sovereignty, to the existence of the Russian state. And Putin didn't stop there. He went on to brag. Uh-uh. Uh, I don't want that stuff. I just want this stuff here. This is what's very important to me. This was a clause that Vladimir Putin included in MK Ultra. They did discuss this heavily. It was the issue to happen. It's directly tied to the Vladimir, to, uh, to Prigozhin. And believe it or not, it's incredible to note also to the Barack Obama, to whom I'm going to get in just a little bit. Warheads have been delivered to the territory of Belarus, but just the first ones. This is the first batch. The use of nuclear weapons undoubtedly is theoretically possible for Russia. For Russia, it is possible if there is a threat to our territorial integrity, independence and sovereignty, to the existence of the Russian state. And Putin didn't stop there. He went on to brag about the sheer number. We have more of these weapons than NATO countries do. They know that, and they keep telling us to start negotiations on reduction. Remember when I told you about the guys that are laughing over there, they demonstrated. Well, you know what? They can shove it. Well, it was interesting. The Secretary of State today said he still no sees, sees no indication. They like this kind of talk. The guys, they were laughing. Um, Barack Obama disappointed again. It was under Barack Obama that Ukraine lost Crimea in 2014. I am sure you are aware of it. Barack Obama supported occupation of Crimea, of Donetsk, by giving Ukraine zero help, assistance of any kind, nothing. But what I noticed during MK Ultra was what caught my attention was the plan they designed on how they would completely melt down, destroy. The idea was to get as many toward on the way on the route to Moscow, to get as many as possible people, Russian people who would have, who are willing to revolt against Putin. So it's basically a total, total cleanup of the Russia before something else was to take a place. I am not going to get into 
before something else was to take place. They are obviously uh, Russian people not willing to comply, willing to take arms in hands to defend the Russian constitution, to defend, to defend values of the Second World War, post-World War treaties, uh, defend even people of Ukraine for the cost of their own lives, uh, are an ultimate danger to Vladimir Putin. Uh, surprising to me, uh, Obama, Putin discussed issue about how to justify if they would have to pull the troops out of Ukraine, how to justify regardless um, even a remaining Russian minority in Ukraine. And I'm not talking about remaining, but newly populated, basically populated for the cost of ethnic cleansing genocide of a native Ukrainian population in Crimea and in Donetsk region. It's all coordinated. Ladies and gentlemen, American President Barack Obama stressed his concerns uh, that really, really, really caught my attention since after 2014, it was absolutely everything possible. American diplomacy, Russian diplomacy did uh, to portray Obama as the one siding with Ukraine and, you know, Denzel Washington, they did some movie in respect to the Russian mafia, demanded from me to actually see Obama as Denzel Washington handling uh, a Russian mafia and stuff like this. It was like a, like a really, really, really hysterical stuff Hollywood produced um, to give, to promote the idea about how um, I, I, I would not stress on a black community. I don't want to do this stuff. Um, black Lives Matter came out as totally, totally, totally corrupt, beyond corrupt human rights institution, uh, willing to promote absolutely anything for as long as it was money on a table. Extremely, extremely disappointing. Uh, nothing to do with the civil rights. Um, you can't do stuff like this. You can't promote civil rights at expense of some other group. You shouldn't do this, guys, because it's karma, and karma will hit you in the ass. Don't do the stuff like this to people. Uh, even if money is involved, when it comes to the human rights issues, um, here in this case, we have entire countries that are trying to get up on their knees. It's actually classified as a racism, and racism doesn't apply only to white people, to the white groups. Ba Obama have proved beyond any doubt that it expands onto other racial groups as well. His latest action against Ukraine uh, in respect to a Russian language uh, on a territory of Ukraine, this is just bizarre as it gets. Obama dreamed about obtaining a Russian citizenship and um, I don't know how this stuff is going to come along. I don't know how this is going to work out. Uh, Prigozhin is march on a Moscow. I was also told this is a warning to Ukraine. So this is like a, from my point, from my analysis, based on what I was able to get you in MK Ultra, they insisted on how the Russians would meet a very, very fierce. Uh, troops on their way to Moscow. It would not only be a nuclear strike they would get, which would be used to expand on Ukraine side of the border, but they would they would face like a very very advanced battalion, very very advanced troops, differently armed. Uh, with advanced weaponry, which would totally, totally delete, and then it would go toward uh, Ukraine and this and that. I wouldn't pay attention to any of that stuff. Uh, it's very, very important to note, also for the Russian side, what I stated earlier, in respect of those guys that were laughing over there. Um, 
there is people that are barely, barely, barely waiting for you to click the button. And um, it's not, boy, it's not going to be, uh, I, I will say nothing here. I will stop short. Uh, when you will do this, you will deal with a multitude of problems and exactly with what I stated to you. You don't have what it takes to finish the war in Ukraine with a nuclear arsenal. That I guarantee you. It's nice that you have so many nukes, but nukes are fucking useless if you're not capable to transfer them across the border. The worse as it gets, they start to explode on your side. And then they strike you and you sign this agreement within like 15 minutes before you're completely deleted from the face of the earth. It's a nasty stuff. You're inches away from being defeated for, for your eternal, for your eternity. You came now inches close to being completely destroyed. If you have only nuclear arsenal that's left to you, it's time to go home from Ukraine, from Crimea, from Donetsk. Ukraine, I think it's going to continue to do its work, and I think they're doing fine. I think they're doing very well. I think that uh, you're not going to be capable to bring so many people, as a matter of fact, then it's Sooner or not, there will be no people that will go to the Ukrainian side anymore. With the speed that they eliminate you, with the speed they're eliminating your military installations, your uh, whatever you have left, you are not going to last because it's like this is like signing for certain debt. Um, Lukashenko, with this nuclear rattle, with his nuclear weapons, I'm not going to even get into it. Uh, three times stronger than in Japan. Um, I was told from the other side, they have many, like, what was known as a Tsar Bomba, ready. Uh, if it's going to come to this, you're going to put a very, very short one. The sad part about it is you're all going to drag us down into nothing. We are all going to be paying for this. It's not going to be only you Russians that are going to be affected. It's going to be everybody. Polacks, Ukrainians, Slovenians, Croats. Everybody is going to be effed with you doing that kind of stuff. I don't have anything else I would say in respect to this video. That's all I have to say. Putin doesn't have what it takes to keep up over there in Ukraine. Not militarily, not man-wise. Prigozhin, that's also very important, stated if he's going to be moving to Ukraine, uh, excuse me, to Belarus, that also was involved in MK Ultra, that's going to be like really, really, really dangerous and it's going to be more used for those troops to attack, I don't know what fucking side. Probably back to the Ukraine or something like this. Um, what Arada tells me that this was a Putin Prigozhinist plan and not what I initially thought even that it would be Prigozhin who would take the side of Ukrainians. So Ukrainians, continue your work, stay alert. Prigozhin is moving to Belarus. It could be very, very well, very soon that he will be moving back in your direction of Ukraine from Belarus. Yeah. So that's all there is to it. Continue, just continue to do your job. Uh, free your country, secure independence, secure your national integrity, your right to the post World War II treaties, existence, I should say, exercise your independence, uh, and uh, what can I say? Celebrate your life. Um, Thanks for watching this video. Till next time.